When we create a new project in the Angular, whether it is workspace or a single application, then loads of files and folders get created for us automatically. In one of the previous video of this course, we have created these two projects. This my application is a single application and this my work is a complete workspace. Let's open both these projects side by side in the editor that is Visual Studio Code. And this is the workspace. So open this one as well. So here you can see on the left side we have the application and here on the right side we have the workspace. And this is a workspace. A workspace is basically a container for the multiple applications. It means in this single workspace we have multiple applications. Okay. Now let's talk about all the files and the folders. In every Angular application there are two files and one folder. These are package.json file package log.json file and the node modules. In this video, we will understand what is the use and role of all these files and the folders in the application. At the top level of this application, we have a folder node underscore modules, node modules. And at the bottom side, we have one file package.json. We also have one more file package log.json. Let's try to understand the concept of all these three files in some another application. When we create a new JS project in our system, then basically we can handle everything by using the npm. For example, at this place I want to create one new JS project that is not specific to Angular, React or any other technology. This is just a simple JS project. For that, I can simply open the command prompt at this place. And in this command prompt, first I can create a new directory. For example, my custom app. Press the enter button. Let's go inside this one. At the back side, you can also see that we have this new folder. Let's open this one also. Now, if at this place I want to initialize a new application for the npm, then I can simply write npm in it. Like this. Hit the enter button. Then this is going to ask some questions to us. Okay, first we have the name of the package. What is the name of the package? The default is my custom app. If you want to change the name, then you can simply type it over here. Let's say here I'm writing my app, hit the enter button. Then it is asking for the version. By default, it is telling us that the version is 1.0.0. If you want to change it, you can enter the version manually or you can simply press the enter button. Then the description like this, hit the enter button. Then the entry point. What is the entry point of this particular application? It is index.js. Let's keep everything default. Then the test command. Ignore this one also. Git repository. If you have created a git repository for this particular application, then you can define that repository over here. If not, simply leave it. Then we have the keywords. The keywords about this particular project. Then we have the author. Let's see here I'm typing my name. Hit the enter button. What is the license? By default, the license is ISC. If you want to have some other license, for example, MIT, then you can define that license over here. Hit the enter button. And now at the last, we have a JSON file. About to write to E, this is the path and this is the name of the file package.json file. In this package.json file, we have some configurations. Is it okay? Yes. Hit the enter button. In the file explorer, you can see that we got a new file package and the type is JSON. It means the file is package.json. If I open this file in one more editor, like this, then over here you can see that it has a name, it has a version, it has a description. This is the main entry point, then it has some script, the author and the license. The name of the file is package.json. Now let's try to compare the same file with the package.json file that we have in our Angular project. Here we are inside this my workspace and over here I want to open this package.json file. We have a similar structure over here but it is a little bit long file. So what is the name? The name is my work. This is the version and this is the script then private and it has some dependencies. When we create a new Angular application, basically we combine multiple libraries and packages together and by using all these packages, we basically build our structure. Now in order to work with the Angular application, we need all these packages. So we need first Angular animations, Angular common, RxJS, 
ts lib john dot js at the bottom side you can also see we have some more dependencies what is the dependency it means this angular application is dependent on all these packages or library and we are getting all these libraries and packages from some other place we will also understand where is that place but as of now just assume that these are the name of the packages that we are using in our application but at this point there is a question why these are defined at two places first we have dependencies and then second we have this dev dependencies now let's assume that i have to build a house in the construction of that house there are several things that are required a crane some persons that will work over there lots of tools lots of other things that are required only for the development of that particular house but those things are not required when you actually live in that particular house okay the same thing is happening over here these packages are required only to build or develop this angular application but these are the basic minimum need when you will even run your application on the production server for example here let's talk about this typescript the typescript is a superset of the javascript and the browsers do not understand anything about the typescript so this typescript is only used for the development ultimately when you produce the production build from this code then the typescript gets converted into javascript automatically and the browser only understand the javascript that is why this typescript is written over here in the dev dependencies because this is just used only in the development same thing is happening with all these angular cli the angular cli is used when you create a new component a new module you build your application you serve your application all these things but we do not need these packages at the production level because the application is already working at that place that is why we have these two groups over here in the package.json so ultimately this package.json is a file that has all the dependencies some of the production level dependencies and some the development level dependencies in the development of the application both these dependencies are required this one and this one but in the production level when you deploy your application at a particular server then only these libraries are required now just try to learn that here we are creating an angular application and here this angular application uses multiple other packages the same thing is also applicable with all these packages let's talk about this rxjs if you will go in the details of this rxjs then this rxjs also use several other applications behind the scene it means this rxjs is also dependent on some other libraries and the packages but those details are not available over here now let's try to create the same situation in the new application that we have just created so over here i can create one new object with name dependencies like this and in the dependencies i can type the name of the package so let's say it is rxjs okay then this was the name of the package and here i had to tell the version of the package we are getting the version from the intellisense automatically let's say here i'm using this 7.2.0 this one okay so here i am telling to this my custom application that this application is dependent on this rxjs let's save the changes now at this place we are only telling the name but to work with the development we need that actual file and for that let's just open the terminal let's use the command prompt and over here if i will run one command npm install hit the enter button then what will happen whatever we have defined in the package.json file in the dependencies and the dev dependencies those will get installed in the node modules folder but before opening the node modules let's open this package.log.json file let's see what we have over here over here you can see that we have the name of the application then the version log file version basically the version of this particular current file required if you will focus on the dependencies then you can see we are having this rxjs this is the version of the rxjs that we have used in this application then it is resolved from this particular place this is the npm registry for this rxjs package then we have the integrity requires and this rxjs requires this tslib it means this has a dependency this rxjs has a dependency on this tslib because we have to work on the rxjs so all these dependencies must get installed in the application and here we have the details about this tslib okay this is the version of this ts library then it is resolved from this particular registry and all these things
In the package.json file, we only have the top layer of all the dependencies that are used in the application. But here in the package.log.json file, we have all other dependencies. Those are required for the further packages that we have installed in our application. But again, where are the actual files? The actual files are available in this node modules folder. If I expand this folder, here you can see we have two folders. First is for this rxjs, this one, and the second tslib is for this tslib. Let's expand this one. We have all the files about this rxjs and here in the tslib we have all the files about this tslib. Now if I want to use anything from this rxjs then I can simply import these things in my application. And here also if you will see that this is again a complete application. It also has a new package.json file. So here you can see there are lots of details over there. Let's not go into the details but just understand that the package.json file has only the top layer dependencies that you are going to use in your application. The package.json file has all the details about the packages and their dependencies with the versions and the registry, everything like that. And in the node modules, we always have the actual file. Now if you will try to focus on the size of these things, then you can see that the size of this package is 1kb, the package log is 1kb. And let's see what is the size of this node modules properties. At this place you can see the size is 4.25. Now let's say there are two developers working on this single application. And to maintain the code we are using some repository. Let's say GitHub. If the first developer checking this entire code in the GitHub repository and the second developer is fetching the code and working with that and the developers also checking in this node modules, then what will happen? As of now, you can see that we are using only one single package in this application and that is RxJS. And the size of this node modules is 4 MB. What will happen if you will use 10 or 20 packages over here, then the size of this node modules will be in gigabytes. And still if you will check in this entire code on your GitHub, then it will simply increase the size of your repository. So what is the best way to handle this situation? The ideal situation is that we should not check in this node modules because the other developers can simply run the npm install command and he can get all the packages because all the packages are listed in the package.json file. Now let's try to open the package.json file that we have in our angular application. Over here you can see that again we have the name, the versions, the scripts, all the dependencies, all the dev dependencies and the details about these dependencies is available in this package.log. Here you can see that this is a very large file. All the details, the versions, resolved, integrity, dev, this is for the dev true, it means the dev dependency required. This one again has a dependency on all these things. So basically, this is the structure that we have just explained in the new application. And all the actual files are available in this node modules. Over here you can see that this is a very large folder and the size would be too much. And if I open this git ignore file, then you can see that we have the node modules. It means I want to ignore this entire folder from checking in to my git repository. And this is the main role of package and package log JSON and the node modules in the application.